Then with, lastly, we got Mr. Drew Dale with the 25. What is the best trade to get into to help with flipping houses in the future? Painting, plumbing, or something else? Keep up the good work, boys. Mm, I don't know. Maybe go work for a nightmare flipper. If you want to find out who the flippers are, go to Craigslist and type in wholesale. There are names on those. There are numbers. Call a wholesaler. Wholesalers sometimes hire the che- they're the cheapest, most cutthroat, but you will learn the most you want ever want to know about flipping from the underbelly. They're called wholesalers. Find them. Craigslist, wholesale, wholesale deals. Those bandit signs that you see that say, I buy houses, call one of those guys. That's a guy trying to buy shitty houses. Those are called bandit signs. I used to do that. I used to work for a guy that did that. He was a fucking nightmare. He was the fucking craziest guy I ever met in my life. But he had like 40 houses. Craziest dude ever. Lil Shit Post 420 says, applying oh, yeah. for a landscaping position here in Memphis. I worked for a F-ball and baseball grounds crew 10 years yeah. ago. Uh, what do I put on my resume to say I have more experience uh, more recently? I want to start my own business eventually. Thank you. Um, you could run their fertilizer leg. And they're like pro turf. They're like elite customers that have a pro turf program. <laughs> Um, that's pretty high experience. Um, I had a few, uh, Fenway guys that were a couple of golf course guys that were groundskeepers. Um, I used to take some classes and try to figure out what they were, what their considerations were. Um, but you could probably run their, uh, some customers in their, in their company are probably going to be really interested in spending as much money as they can to have the greenest grass as possible. Tell them you used to work and tell them you know how to do it. And that, that's all that, that, that exists. That's a relatively underdone concept in landscaping that's what i would do if i was going back into owning a landscaping company there are guys that just want people out there that just want the greenest grass and they'll do whatever they got to do they'll spend any amount of money um i spend i did 20 bags of fertilizer today i spread 20 bags of fertilizer today myself this morning and then i'm going to do it again seven times i spend i don't care i cut my grass 29 times i enjoy the fuck out of it so there are other people that can't do that that work a day job but they will gladly pay for it and they want to know that you know how to make that that's all they want to know is that you know exactly what to do to get the grass green good news is i know too and it's relative it's just money let's throw money at it that's really how it is time and money so thank you man appreciate it not today nsa with the 25 hey nick i'm a commercial clam driver that has been selling mostly crab bait but now i have a food grade license and i've been selling a good amount to the chinese i'm spread thin but i need more customers how do i spin plates and get these crabs to the customer Mm. These crab clams. Clams. I love seafood wholesaling. I'm not even playing games with yeah. you. I love seafood wholesaling. I always wanted to be the man on the dock with the cash pile. So if like a commercial fisherman, you bring you all the, all these guys out here. You like guys. A lot of friends of mine and friends adjacent. They get small commercial. They all have friends who have like small boat commercial fisherman license, fishing licenses. Yeah. And they just rock it. They they crush it. It's, they're all all young dudes, nasty ass fishermen. They come in, but you sell it to a market. And there's like a way, but you can go direct to fancy restaurants. I mean, I know that. That's that's the best way to go to the foodies. Foodies will u- use it if it's dope. Um, you're gonna need a reefer van, and that's why I'm interested in it because I get to buy a Sprinter refrigerated van, and then you just make. I don't know. It's kind of like a cash pile business. It's like a. I've worked flea markets my whole life, so it kind of feels like adjacent to it. Um, but yeah, man, uh, branding and speed. I think, and I think you have to build a business on the back of a. Like honestly, I think a van would do it. Packaging. Um, packaging and van and spe- and being there and freshness uh, would probably work it and then rock it to the uh, the best restaurants in town um, closest to proximity and then make the relationships that work for you. I hope that helps. Orknak, leader of the fire tribe of Eastern Gordonier. Uh Nick, biggest lessons learned from starting and selling a landscaping company so young and maybe some tips for us Zoomers wanting to start similar ventures, labor-based small businesses. God bless y'all. Yeah, man, I had a I had a great time. It was one of the best time of my life working outside. I should have never sold my livelihood, um, but it happened. Um, I had 20, 20 full time employees, eighteen floating all the time. Um, I don't know. I got to I learned to speak Spanish pretty well. Got to hang out with some cool dudes, build some cool things, uh, selling it. I sold my livelihood. It was stupid. I was like a you know I I liked the job that I had and I made pretty good money. I worked my ass off for it. Banged my hands, crushed my finger. I, I tore this finger off one time, my middle finger right here. Um, you know, a uh, high-stress job, but I like it. Um, I was pretty good at it. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I took it pretty seriously. Um, I shouldn't have sold it. I would, I, I would have, my whole life would have went differently. But, hey, whatever. Um, but, yeah, be, be really great at being a landscaper. It's just detail work, man. It's understanding, like, how to finish a house. 
Proper estate maintenance is no joke, man. Edge the beds. Fucking don't throw mulch around the barks of trees. Know how to prune different species of trees properly. Plant properly. Maintenance. When to fertilize. When to prune. When to cut back. Um, how many times they need to be cutting. Um, but there's a lot of information. I wish, I, like I said, wish I would have never sold. It was a cool thing that I got to do. But shit happens. Uh, we have Sean Kausek with the 25. Nick, I've been nailing interviews recently for an engineering sales position. A lot of client interaction. I'm not used to, but it's huge money if I hit my sales goals. Tips on getting comfortable talking with potential clients. Uh, that applies to you. I mean, you, you did that car sales. Yeah. Just um, to come in like this, man. Uh, be nice. Be nice to people. Uh, find out what they want. Understand what you look like. Understand what you look like to them, what they think of you, what their preconceived no tape mode, uh, could be, you know, what they what they could possibly take away and kind of beat them to the punch on it. Um, be the best at your field. Uh, have an opinion on what their options are. Know what their options are left and right of them and their optic. Um, and talk about that. Um, what else are you thinking about? Don't be afraid to blow a sale by like uncovering the value of someone else's product. If you're good at it and you know what you're doing, you can... You're, you should be in the right position. You know what I mean? There should be, a, there should be some, some spread between you and the, com the competition. Talk about that openly. I, you know, people go, oh, the BMW is better. It's like, yeah, it's faster, actually. The BMWs are faster. Yeah. You know, they're just BMWs, man. They're fucking those dickhead cars, you know? It's like, like you, you don't have to be, people would be scared of that. People would be like, oh, don't tell them it's faster. The fucking Mercedes is faster. I'm like, no, it's not. The BMW is quicker. So is the Audi. The Audi's quicker, too. Like, you'd say shit like that. And they'd be like, don't do that. And I'm like, I just did, like, they don't, like, they don't know. Like, what? come on. And uh, pe people would say that all the time. Like, I, I always do the anti-sell. Yeah. I would do the anti-sell all the time. Because if you're not really anti-selling, you're just calling it what it is. Yeah. And people would say, like, why are you not, why are you unselling me a car? People would get so mad at me. Really? And I'm like, I'm just telling you the fucking facts. Yeah. Like, why are you, like, dogging? I'm like, I'm not. I'm just saying the car you're looking at is expensive and you have options that are more money. I'm sorry, that are, um, it's the field. There's yeah. no mysteries in the car business. If you think there's fucking magic, I have a bunch of land to sell you in Florida. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's. If you think there's magic in the car business, or if you think there's magic in the software sales business, then let's go watch David Blaine. Let's go watch Chris Angel Mind Freak try to fucking kiss my wife's neck. Mind Freak, your wife's perfume smells great. We got Big Bosco coming in here, Big showing everybody who's boss. Dang. Uh, some advice for the youngster subcontractors. Go to meet the GCs in your area. There's always plenty of small stuff we need done that we don't always want to pay the premium of the big subs. Do a good job and you'll get fed more and more. I'm, I can't agree more with you. That's, just go to, the, uh, go to the GCs. Those guys have work coming out of their ass. Um, they need guys on the fly all the time. Guys not showing up to work. Guys going on vacation. Um, filling spots. Thank you, man. Uh, Zinthrax oh, yeah. Knox with the 25. Yo, Nick, thinking of attending a residential and commercial electrician program, trying to get into a union-sponsored apprenticeship and doing the program to show them I'm serious about being my career. What do you think? Why don't you give that union hall a call before, uh, before you do that, too? Mm. Maybe there'll be something. Tell them you're eager. It's nice to hear that someone's eager to work. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear from you, happy to take you with open arms. Um, give it a whirl. Congratulations on that. A great, great step, honestly. I know, uh, give them a call. Give the Union Hall a call. You, you be out there. They'll be, they'll be, they got you. 